Hi, welcome to Salarat TV with your host of Salarat, Addison Rex. So this week I thought I'd talk a little bit about yeast. I mean, it's critical to winemaking. It's that magic ingredient that transforms grape juice into wine. But what is it exactly? Well, yeast is actually a microorganism. That's right. If you didn't already know it, it's a living thing. It's a tiny, single-celled organism that likes to munch on the sugar in the grape juice and it excretes a number of compounds, one of which becomes ethanol, which is the compound responsible for that warm, fuzzy feeling that we get when we drink wine. But you know, how did we discover this magic reaction? Well, see, yeast actually exists naturally uh, on grapes, in the vineyard, um, it can be just in the winery, in the barn. Uh, and you can actually see it sometimes on the grapes. If you ever got grapes, uh, seen wine grapes, and they kind of look like they're a little bit dusty on the outside. In the, in the industry, it's called a bloom. There's a, a term for it. And uh, it's actually, yeah, it's a little bit of wax, but uh, the natural yeast that come in. Now, some winemakers actually like to use this naturally occurring yeast, but most winemakers Now, some winemakers like to use this naturally occurring yeast, believing that, oh, it reflects the vineyard a little bit more, um, the terroir. Uh, but because yeast has such a huge impact on the wine, uh, more, most winemakers usually like to have a lot more control about it. And um, it's pretty much an industry standard to use uh, cultured yeast strains. Now, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of different species of yeast, but the yeast that's typically used in the wine industry is called Saccharomyces cervicae. That's the, your word for the day, Saccharomyces cervicae. And of that particular species, there's lots and lots and lots of variations that we call strains. For example, this guy right here is RA17. They usually don't have very, uh, creative, interesting names. I mean, this guy, right, is just called MT. <laughs> I mean, they typically uh, typically don't get too creative with them. Some a little bit more interesting, like uh, Simi White. Um, but usually they're just, uh, just designations. And these yeast strains can impart, you know, a huge, huge impact on the wine. It can affect the style. It's flavors in it and that's because each yeast is a little bit different and you know the the interactions they have with different compounds in the wine and the compounds that they excrete might differ and that'll really impact it you never use a uh, white wine yeast with a red wine for example but whatever yeast you decide to go with it's really important to keep them happy yeast are really demanding little critters and they require lots of nutrients and vitamins and minerals to uh, happily complete their natural process. Um, this primarily they need um, carbon, uh, sulfur, nitrogen, and phosphorus to uh, keep their processes going. And that's actually all naturally occurring within the grape. So I'd imagine that you know, the, first, the first wine was invented quite by accident with uh, natural yeast coming in from the vineyard and um, just, you know, people just, you know, leaving grapes out and naturally you started to eat the sugar and they had everything they really needed to uh, produce the ethanol. But uh, today, our, I guess you could say our, our cultured yeast strands have gotten a little bit um, spoiled because they get 
fed in addition to um, to all of the, the the sugars and other nutrients that are found within the grape, they actually get fed a very strict diet um, of what we call superfood, which um, looks a lot like the yeast itself. It's just very, it's incredibly fine. We actually um, use a mask yeast rehydration nutrient. Actually, this is not the superfood. The yeast uh, comes in these little packages in a dormant state. So these guys aren't dead, but they're just sleeping. So we use, there's a certain process that uh, we use here at the winery uh, to wake up the dormant yeast. We uh, heat up some water to exactly 104 degrees, or so like to get it as close as possible to that. And then we mix in some stuff uh, that we call uh, Go Firm, which I believe is the, the proprietary name of basically just a cocktail of yeast nutrients. And um, we uh, pour in some of the sleeping yeast and stir it all around and let it sit peacefully for a little bit while until they all wake up and then we add it to uh, the, the juice. So once they're in the juice though, we continue to add nutrients just for the yeast to eat. And that is because good wine is made from happy yeasts. So we use two things primarily during the fermentation process. One thing is called superfood. Like I said before, it's just a uh, cocktail of all the different nutrients. And then we also add um, uh, some of this stuff. This is just a little nugget of uh, diammonium phosphate. Or we call it DAP. So at Deerfield, we actually um, have some organic wines and some non-organic wines that we produce in this facility. And it's very important that we keep everything separate. Otherwise, um, can't, it won't be certified organic. And just like uh, everything else, there's organic yeast and non-organic yeast. Um, really, the only difference, though, is the documentation. It's actually, uh, all yeast is naturally occurring. In fact, it's kind of a pet peeve of our winemaker when people say, oh, is it natural yeast, you know, or is it cultured yeast? Well, all yeast is naturally occurring. It all, you know, there's no such thing as a synthetic yeast strain. There's cultured yeast strains. Um, but all yeast is natural. So the only difference really between organic and non-organic yeast is that um, well, no synthetic chemicals were used in the process of making, of producing the cultured yeast strains, but Really, it's very likely that many yeast strains that aren't considered organic are, in fact, um, organic. But here's some or organic yeast. This guy is laying dormant, but um, I know it's probably pretty hard to tell on the camera. But you know, like I said, these are single-celled organisms, and you actually—I mean—they're pretty big. They're big enough to see with the naked eye, but uh, they are obviously very small. Well, I hope you learned a little bit today, and uh, see you next week on Cellar App TV.